During the 1980s and 90s, Ron Wyatt was responsible for discovering a series of biblical sites. Many of these sites had been discussed by ancient writers and the significance of these locations were recognized across history. Wyatt's attention to these locations has helped generate more of a modern curiosity to biblical archaeology and helps point to the direction of material evidence of the biblical accounts of long ago. For more information, check out on YouTube Ron Wyatt Discoveries, 2022, Gamora Red Sea Crossing, Mount Sinai, Noah's Ark, Blood of Christ, by Truth is Christ, and www.ronwyatt.com. Quotes used in this video are from the magazine Treasured Truths, where you can order from ronwyatt.com. With that all being said, let's get started. Genesis 6 verses 13 to 15 And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, rooms shalt thou make in the ark and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. Genesis 8 verse 4 And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. In 1959, while examining aerial photos of his country, Turkish Army Captain Lihan Darupinar came across a photo of the formation below. In the mountains of the Ararat region was a boat-shaped object almost as long as two football fields at an altitude of 6,300 feet. Dr. Arthur Brandenberger, a photogrammetry expert from Ohio State University, became interested. Brandenberger was involved in discovering the Cuban missile bases in aerial photos during the Kennedy era, and after carefully studying the photo, concluded. I have no doubt at all that this object is a ship. In my entire career, I have never seen an object like this on a stereo photo. Ron Wyatt, as seen on the left, with one of the many huge drogue stones found nearby. He believed these were used to hold the nose of the ark into the waves to keep the ark from rolling over in the cataclysmic storm. Colored tapes connect metal detector readings and show the pattern of iron within the boat-shaped site. As a result of Ron's findings and parallel investigative work by their own scientists, members of the Ministries of Foreign Affairs, Internal Affairs, and researchers from Ataturk University met in December of 1986 and concluded that this was indeed the remains of the legendary Ark. On June 20, 1987, the Turkish government established the new Noah's Ark National Park following the confirmation by a government commission of the investigative work on a site by the American Ronald E. Wyatt. Ron Wyatt, guest of honor at the dedication of Noah's Ark. The 2014 resistivity scans revealed the ark still deep within the earth. 
See Noah's Ark scans dot NZ. According to Genesis 6 verse 15, the Ark was to be made 300 cubits long. When taking into consideration that Moses, who wrote the book of Genesis as influenced by the Holy Ghost, was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, Acts 7 verse 22, he would have been using the royal Egyptian cubit, 52.4 centimeters. This would be the length of 515.5 feet, which is precisely the size of the site found at Ararat. As a final feature, let's watch an interview that Ron Wyatt had with CNN in 1991. Let's go on to the Ark. Uh, what makes you think that this is Noah's Ark? Well, we uh, uh, have the word of a photogrammetry expert that this large object is a boat. Uh, and also, its uh, location on a mountainside at 6,300 feet fits in with the fact that there's only enough water on the planet to increase the sea level to 7,000 feet above present sea level if ice caps and everything were melted down. Also, uh, there's, shall we say, boxcar loads of timbers out there. Donna, I have one right here in front of me. Okay, let's take a look and let's talk about that to continue our, our chat here. Uh, tell us what that is. Well, this is a piece of deck board. We used a subsurface interface radar system to look down through the boat. Uh, we were not allowed to do an extensive excavation, which is first choice in archaeology once you feel you've identified something. But anyway, we found tremendous amounts of these timbers, and uh, the Turkish authorities had their people dig this up uh, and allowed me to bring it home to have it analyzed. And it is indeed petrified wood. In particular, it's pecky cypress. OK, so that's petrified wood. Now, yes. now how are you going to go about uh, dating that, and what kind of uh, analyzation are you going to use to see if that, that is, is the ark? Well, uh, what uh, archaeologists are required to supply in order to identify a site, Donna, is uh, physical remains. And then if you're fortunate enough to have inscriptions, this is a real plus. And then, of course, a local tradition. And there's trem tremendous amounts of physical remains, and there are a great number of inscriptions and, of course, uh, this whole uh, story of the Ark landing on Ararat, uh, the location of this uh, boat is 12 miles south of the big mountain. And, of course, there's uh, a long-time local tradition that the Ark landed in that area. Mm -hmm. You know, well-known biblical story. Did you find some animal remains as they were supposed to be on there two by two? Uh, we did. Uh, there's a large amount of what's called corpolites by geologists and archaeologists. Uh, these are animal droppings that have fossilized. We also found a fossilized antler. Now, uh, the possibility has been brought up that this might be a barn or some other type structure. Uh, antlers are associated with non-domesticated animals. And of course, uh, this tells us that at least one undomesticated animal uh, was on this boat at some point in time. Mm -hmm. And the uh, corporal lights that are on there, uh, of course, we can identify the animal by the shape and whatnot of the droppings. Now, we also found something, and I guess if I have a favorite object, it's this. This is a rivet. And it's quite a sophisticated riveting system. It's a washer about approximately three and a half inches in diameter with a shaft that's a little over an inch in diameter, and it's been struck while it's hot, and this splays the end of the shaft out so it cannot slip back through this washer. Now, there are thousands of these on there. Uh, these are uh, found in the radar scans. Mm -hmm. I, I, I need to go on for just a moment. Sure. I guess I don't need to tell you, of course, that you do have some critics. We had a story last Friday, sure. uh, and, and also a scientist at Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico who analyzed the artifact says that there's no way that they are pieces of the Ark. And one of the critics in a report that we had on Friday says that uh, 
he doesn't think that it's anything more than a rock formation and that perhaps you've been watching too many Indiana Jones movies. Well, I do like Indiana Jones movies. Uh, now, the gentleman, uh, since you didn't mention his name, I uh, will just uh, say that perhaps he didn't want his name mentioned. But we have, uh, shall we say, hours of footage of this individual saying this is indeed Noah's Ark. Now, uh, I have a little problem with somebody that says, yes, there's even intervaled metal readings on there. Uh, we, he actually himself found a right-angled iron bracket, and we have him on video, video identifying this as a right-angled iron bracket. And he took it to Los Alamos National Laboratories and had it analyzed, and we have the results of that. It was 91% pure. Okay. Uh, ferric oxide. So, uh, All right. uh, I don't, I don't have any problem with critics. Everybody's okay. entitled to an opinion, but I hate to see them doing a, a 180. All right, we need to take a break here, but we will come back. After you have watched this presentation, consider how, after Jesus's resurrection, in the Gospel of John, in chapter 20, verses 25 to 28 how he came to the disciples and specifically to Thomas, where he had said, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. This was after Thomas had said, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. After Thomas had seen Jesus resurrected, Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. If you have doubts about God and what the Bible says, the Lord has revealed these things to us the same way Jesus did to Thomas. These discoveries made are here for us to have assurance of the word of God and is meant to give faith to even those who do not believe. Consider the following presentation and consider the Lord's will in your life.